Hello everyone, my name is Yolanda Castillo and I'm a PhD student at the Biomedical Signal Processing and Interpretation Group of IBEC. Today I will present this work which was done in collaboration with Institute Goodman and the title is Electromyographic and Accelerometric Evaluation of Trunk Function and Dystarmic Effect in Patients with Spinal Core Injury. Spinal core injury is a condition that causes motor and sensory impairment below the level of the injury, but it's also associated with many health complications. One of these problems is the impairment of trunk muscles. Trunk stability is essential for postural control, but also to support functional limb movements. And that is why the impairment in trunk function sustained by patients with a spinal core injury constitutes by itself a major problem of motor disability. However, trunk stability is rarely examined in studies of mobility after spinal core injury, and one of the reasons is the lack of objective quantitative measures for the assessment of trunk function. On the other hand, the startle response is an involuntary defensive mechanism against unexpected or threatening stimuli. A very interesting phenomenon which has been described in the literature is the so-called star react effect, which states that in a reaction time task paradigm, if a loud startling acoustic stimulus is presented, then your reaction time is faster because it triggers a rapid release of the prepared motor program. This phenomenon has been demonstrated in many different movements, both in healthy and neurological populations, but there are very few studies on the star react effect on drug movements or on patients with a spinal cord injury. For these reasons, the objective of this study were, first, to quantitatively characterize trunk muscle activity and movement patterns during a reaching task in patients with a spinal cord injury. Secondly, to compare the impact of cervical and thoracic injuries in terms of trunk function. And finally, to investigate the potentially destabilizing effects of a startling acoustic stimulus and the star react effect in these patients. For these purposes, we designed this experiment in which we recruited 24 patients with a spinal cord injury, including 15 individuals with cervical injuries and 9 individuals with thoracic injuries. In addition, 24 healthy volunteers were used as a control group. While sitting on a wheelchair, subjects had to raise their arm and bend their trunk forward as fast as possible to reach for a switch button. This movement was repeated 20 times, and in five randomly selected trials, a startling acoustic stimulus was presented. During this task, we measured the response time as the time to bottom press, the electromyographic activity of eight neck, arm, and trunk muscles, and triaxial accelerometric data with a smartphone that was placed on the subject's thorax. Then, we processed and analyzed these signals and extracted different features, including the EMG onset latencies and amplitudes for each muscle, and accelerometric features such as the trunk tilt and lateral angles, movement duration, or angular velocity. Now, I will show you some of the main results of the study. First, patients with cervical injuries were slower than those with thoracic injuries and controls, as denoted by longer response times and also delayed EMG onset latencies. The startling acoustic stimulus significantly reduced the response time and the EMG latencies of all muscles in patients with thoracic injuries and controls, but this effect was not so clear in patients with cervical injuries, who showed a higher variability. This reduced the star react effect could suggest an increased cortical control used by these patients to try to compensate for the increased risk of losing balance. Another interesting result was that in patients with a spinal cord injury, forward trunk tilt was accompanied by a significant lateral deviation, possibly as a compensatory strategy to try to improve sitting balance. Finally, I would like to explain the conclusions of the study. By combining electromyographic recordings and smartphone accelerometer data, we've been able to provide a quantitative characterization of trunk muscle activity and movement patterns during a reaching task in patients with cervical and thoracic spinal cord injury. Our results revealed deficits in postural control and compensatory strategies employed by individuals with a spinal cord injury, such as delayed responses or higher lateral deviations, which might have important consequences for rehabilitation. Therefore, the proposed neurophysiological measures and mHealth tools could be used to develop more suitable methods for the assessment of trunk impairment in patients with a spinal cord injury in order to improve the follow-up and management of these patients. 
So that's the end of my presentation. If you have any question or you want more information, please visit my virtual space and I will be happy to talk to you.